Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. This will just about be the most beautiful Telecaster that you'll ever see, and it's the first Telecaster on the show. Well, in the modern era, anyways. But this is another one from the Private Build Owners Collection for a very special Fender Friday. So this thing, it's the Merle Haggard Tough Dog Telecaster. If you're not familiar with the works of Merle Haggard, he is an American country songwriter, guitar player, fiddler. He did a bunch of stuff, but he is famous for the Bakersfield sound, which is essentially a twangy Telecaster mixed with steel guitar sounds that was more lively than the Nashville sound back in the 50s. So we're talking the old school, real country, not the modern day stuff. Merle was born during the Great Depression and he became very troubled after his father's death and he ended up in jail. Once he got out of jail, he launched a very successful country music gig. He's had 38 number one hits on the US country charts. So this isn't a signature guitar of just some random guy that doesn't deserve it. This is the signature instrument of a true country guitar legend. One little bonus fact for you here is he was born April 6, 1937, and died on his birthday, April 6, 2016. Now, if I would have known his birthday, death day being April 6, I would have done this video last Saturday, despite not being a Fender Friday. But, eh, oh well, I'm too late on that one. But now that we know who this guitar is for, let's take a look at this Telecaster because it is absolutely insanely beautiful and absolutely insanely crazy at the same time. This is not a standard run of the mill Telecaster. We've got some freaky stuff going on here. First off, we have a laminate quilt maple top in two pieces. You can see it's absolutely gorgeous, but instead of having a center seam here, I believe this is rosewood that they just run along the center to kind of give it a more high-end look. Some people might dig that, some people might not, but hey, it's part of the aesthetic feature here. But this is on top of two alder pieces that are joined to a maple center block. Now what's kind of interesting is that these alder pieces are chambered. So if you think Les Paul chambering, how it just has a few chambers here and there, it's kind of like that, but it's just in these wings. So I'll throw up a photo here that shows you underneath the control plate here. It's really not that much. Like once we're back into the real view here, it's just like a small little thing right here. It's not a huge area. Now there's no way to tell how big that area is on this side without taking a hacksaw. We'll, we'll just leave this top alone. It's not my guitar to saw in half, but I'm guessing it would be a similar, very small little chambering area. And this maple center block here is heavily flamed. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Now the whole body has binding on the top, but it's not your standard binding. This is what they call Ivoroid. It kind of has like lines in it. It looks very unique and special. Now it's a little bit hard to tell, you know, on camera, not seeing it in person, how it really looks. But another good way to tell is if you look at the pick guard, cause it's made of the exact same Ivoroid material. I mean, ivoroid meaning it's supposed to look like ivory. This is a very fancy instrument. But let's talk about the design of this pickguard. The whole semi-hollow chambering this instrument has is very reminiscent of a thin line Telecaster. You know, the one with the F holes. So what he's done here is he's taken the thin line style pickguard and just kind of mixed it with the normal one. If you're not familiar with what the thin line one looks like, just look right over here. You can see it kind of swoops down and engulfs the entire control plate cavity. That way you don't need this little thing right here. Whereas a regular Telecaster, as you can see right here, it has more of a body on this area and then comes straight across. So this has the curve of a thin line pickguard, but this portion is regular Telecaster style. So I think that's really interesting once you learn that. It features Fender's Custom Shop Texas Special Pickups. These things sound fantastic in it. You've got the gold cover over the neck pickup and the uncovered bridge. But here's something else that's super interesting about this instrument. This is not a three-way switch. You've got one, two, three, four. So you've got an extra position than you normally have on a regular Telecaster. Now, what do those do? The all the way up position is both pickups in series. 
Then once you switch it down to the next one, you've got just the neck pickup. And then our added bonus position is both pickups again, but this time in parallel. Man, series and parallel makes such a huge difference on this guitar. This position's really good for that chicken picking stuff if you know how to do that. And then the last position, just straight up bridge. So you've got your normal neck, middle in two different ways and bridge pickup positions with this thing. And now for where this telly just goes absolutely insane. When the owner of this instrument first showed this to me, I didn't fully understand what I was looking at here. This is a set neck Telecaster. No, it's not neck through. It sure does look like it though. Look at all the flame going all the way up and down the neck. But if you look real closely here, you can see where that maple center block was then joined with the neck. You can kind of see that line where it just looks different because the maple was different colors. But it is a true set neck Telecaster. They're normally bolt-on necks. So you've got this kind of clunky heel here with the four bolts putting the neck on. This doesn't have that. It's got this like comfort access heel joint here. So it makes this incredibly comfortable to play. You can reach every single fret, no problem. I mean, you can, you can just keep going. This is how comfortable that thing is. So it is an amazing playing instrument and that's just such a unique feature. There's not that many set neck Telecasters out there. Fenders in general do not have set necks. That's more of a Gibson thing. And as if that set neck wasn't enough, you've got 22 jumbo frets and the whole neck is just insanely flamed. I mean, you can see it a little bit here on the fretboard. I mean, it's still heavily flamed, but just wait till you look at the back of the neck. Oh boy, I love me a flamed maple neck. I've always wanted like a custom shop fender with this on it because it's just so absolutely beautiful. And then you've got your rosewood skunk stripe down here. And I like how it kind of disappears right there. It's interesting. But the neck profile on this thing is really chunky. It's a C neck shape. The nut width is rather skinny to what I'm used to at 1.61 inches at the nut. And it increases to a normal status of a 2.03 at the 12th. Now, as far as depths go at the first fret, it was 0.87, which increased to 0.99 at the 12th. So it doesn't necessarily sound super chunky by those measurements. So it's a very full feeling neck without being, you know, too bulky. I mean, it's not quite like an R7 or anything. And I'm a huge fan of the jumbo frets. I've been saying this for days now. They're tall enough that it's easy to bend, but not too tall that you're bending the note out of tune. And now for the face of the headstock. Here's where some cool stuff happens. Yes, continuously flamed, but you've got Schaller tuners here with Fender's logo on them with the mother of pearl looking tips. But what's kind of interesting about these besides just being gold is you've got like these lines on the edges of the gold. So it kind of makes it look like it's been engraved. I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not, but you then have Merle Haggard's signature right here the Fender logo, and here it is, the Tough Dog Telly. You've got that little abalone dog here. It's based off of Merle's Jack Russell Terrier as he had a bunch of those in his lifetime, and that's just his tribute to that. Personally, I think it looks like a little chihuahua, so I like it too. And the only other thing I can really tell you about this instrument is, hey, we've got Schaller strap lock buttons stock from the factory. I forgot to show you this earlier, the center block goes all the way through as the name implies. So what are my thoughts of this instrument? The pros, obviously it's insanely gorgeous. You have a nice two-tone kind of tobacco sunburst finish going on. You've got quilt maple, you've got the flame maple, you got flame maple again. You've got gold hardware, pearl tips. You've kind of got a nice subtle black and natural back going on here, which I think complements the top well. It's just such an insanely gorgeous guitar. But at the same time, it's very versatile. It does all the Telecaster things and more. And it's just a cool design with the whole set neck thing going on. Another thing I like about this Telecaster is it's relatively lightweight without being too lightweight. It's seven pounds, four and a half ounces. That's a really nice mark for a Telecaster. And lastly, it's associated with a country music legend. And I wouldn't necessarily think, hmm, 
old school country guy. I bet he can design a really cool fancy Telecaster. I would have thought he'd have like an old beat down thing. So it was definitely interesting to learn about this one. But now, what are the cons of this instrument? I did not realize how expensive this guitar was when I was demoing it. These things are retailing a little bit over $6,500. That's a pricey Telecaster. Definitely worth it if you appreciate fine woods and you have that kind of a budget to blow. But I mean, everybody else, yeah, 6,500 bucks. This is quite expensive for a Telecaster. Is it necessarily any better than a modified other Telecaster? Nah, probably not, but it's, it's all in the mystique and beauty of this thing is where the price comes in. Something else I didn't like about this instrument is I absolutely hate this gold plate right here because it's impossible to keep your fingerprints off of it. It annoys me because you're always doing like your volume swells and whatnot. So you get fingerprints there. It's like, ugh. that's a little bit annoying, but I guess you can live with it. It's just a small nitpick. And then the last thing I have to knock on this guitar is a little bit more serious. I mean, if you're buying Merle Haggard's signature Telecaster, you're probably playing country music, clean and twangy. But if you're a madman like myself that has to do a clean and dirty demo for every guitar and runs it through his Mesa Boogie with high gain, this thing feedbacks like crazy and not the good kind. It's, you take your hands off it and go, yeah, it's, it's not very good for that. So you're not going to be John 5 with this Telecaster. And despite having the stigmatism that you should only play like clean country stuff on this, it really does handle rock guitar and distortion pretty well. I like the tones anyways. So now that I've talked about it, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. <laughs> enjoyed this look at the Merle Haggard Telecaster. If you would like to sponsor your own episode of the Trogley's Guitar Show, you can visit my website, troglesguitarshow.com, and find out more there. This instrument is not for sale. It was simply just to show you guys. But before we leave, I'll go ahead and show you the case. This is a Fender Custom Shop case. It's kind of just a tannish brown color, nothing too special here. You've got your Fender logo right there, three latches on the front, Two of them are locking combo locks. 
And on the inside, it's a beautiful gold color. The case is made by G&G. And the design of this case is kind of cool. I mean, obviously you got the colors, you got the Fender Custom Shop going on there. But notice, you've got an extra long neck rest. That way you're not gonna crack your neck at the heel, as sometimes will happen with bolt-ons. But you also have this little cradle right there for the neck. And this all opens up and you've got this huge lot of case candy here. So you get this awesome strap here. It actually feels pretty nice. Doesn't look like it's ever been used, but you get the custom care guide there. There's the Schaller counterparts. You've got some more little case candy in there, but take a look at this certificate of authenticity booklet. It's like an old fashioned styled leather bound booklet. It opens up like that, and then you can see the Certificate of Authenticity, and that's where you can also keep your receipt for warranty information and all that other stuff. Personally, I, I think this is a little bit all big and clunky for what it needs to be. I think I like the Gibson-styled ones better, but this definitely does seem high-end. Then this tells you all about the uh, custom guitars that you can order. So, very cool. If you think you might be interested in being an owner of a Fender Tough Dog Merle Haggard Telecaster, I'll leave a link in the description that'll show you some of the other used and new ones that are currently available on Reverb. Thank you Troglodytes for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.